Are you ready to move to Florida? Well, before you do, you need to know exactly what to do to avoid all the pitfalls that can come along with living in Florida. So if you've Googled worst parts of Florida, you're gonna come up with a laundry list of things. So let's break it down how making living here in the Sunshine State is gonna be a little less stressful after some of this information. And be sure to keep watching until the end because I am gonna share with you the absolutely number one thing that all Floridians must know. Now to start with, let's talk about insurance. Actually, we're gonna talk a lot about insurance in today's video, so stick around because there's a lot of different insurance parts of this video. First of all, how do you avoid paying more for insurance than you need to? This is definitely one of our biggest challenges currently in our housing market today. To start with, don't look at homes that have roofs that are over 15 years old or possibly 20 years old if it's a towel roof. And you may ask, well, how are you gonna know that before you start looking? Well, if you have a good agent that works for you, we can always find out what the age of the roofs are before we show a home. There are property disclosures that we reach out and ask for. Sometimes they're online, sometimes we have access to them, but it's really good to know that, what the age of the roof is before getting too far down the road. The next thing to check out is the electrical panel. This is very, very important. And again, for some of these older homes, if the electrical panel has not been updated, it could be a red flag. Now, a super, super important thing to look at when you're looking at homes are the doors and windows. How old are those windows? And have they been updated? Are there hurricane shutters? Are there impact windows? And one thing to keep in mind with insurance, you're gonna get a discount on your insurance policy if you have updated windows, but it has to be windows and doors. So all of the openings to the home have to be updated, um, have to be hurricane rated. There are certain things that the insurance company is going to look for to give you those discounts on insurance. So those are ways to lower your insurance costs to get started. And please, please, please shop around for insurance. Just this past week, one of my clients called me telling me that he got four quotes for insurance. What? And the first quote, believe it or not, was $32,000. Yes, you heard that right. And then he kept shopping around and ended up being able to have the exact same coverage for $6,000. Now it may sound crazy ah! that it can be that big of a swing between companies. That is why it is so important to work with a very reputable agent and insurance company and really figure out what you're paying for and so that you're not overpaying. Now keep watching because we're gonna go a little further about insurance in just a minute. Now the next thing to avoid now, some people, this is a big deal, some it is not, and that is paying high HOA fees. Now, if you're looking for a property in Florida and you're like, I just don't wanna pay for a lot in HOA fees. I don't need to have the bells and whistles of amenities or don't need to have a gated neighborhood, that is perfectly doable. Remember, in Florida, HOAs run with deed restrictions most of the time, and deed restrictions are there for the benefit of the homeowner. You do want a few rules in your neighborhood as you don't necessarily want your neighbor to be able to, let's say, paint their house purple or just leave all their toys piling up in their front yard, right? So HOAs and deeds are important. But if you do not want large HOAs, then my recommendation is, you know, sometimes some of the older neighborhoods or neighborhoods that are non-gated or neighborhoods that do not have those state-of-the-art amenities. I know for myself, I have a low HOA. We still have pools and tennis courts and other things, non-gated, and I feel perfectly safe. So there are ways to find neighborhoods with low HOA fees. All right, we're going back to the insurance issue. Another way to avoid insurance cost is the flood insurance. Now this may change down the road, but keep in mind all of Florida is indeed in a flood zone. The difference is our elevation. Where do we fall on that flood map? And remember flood maps are determined by FEMA. So there are multiple different flood zone ratings. Now, if you do not wanna pay high flood insurance, be sure to look for properties that are in flood zone X and avoid those that are in A, AE, V or VE. These are all 100 year flood zones or coastal flood zones and your insurance premiums can definitely be higher. But what if you do wanna live close to the water? Well, there are ways to still keep your premiums low. For instance, there's many, many properties that were built that are elevated above seven, eight, nine, 10 feet. 
depending on where it lies. And they're doing this specifically to get out of those, paying those high flood insurance premiums. What normally happens is the garage is the main level and then your living is up the next floor up. And so you will have steps normally or an elevator in these homes. Now keep in mind, a lot of times we find storage or expanded spaces around the garage areas. And some people like to finish these spaces off for a family room or extra space, but they're not insurable space. So if you're going to finish out any of those spaces, it's not going to be insured. So if there is a flood, don't put anything down there that you, you know, you don't want to lose or that you expect to be covered because it's not going to happen. All right. The next thing, Let's avoid having creatures in your backyard. I know it sounds a little crazy here in Florida that we have so many different wild animals and creatures and people talk about it all the time. Yes, we do have alligators, bears, coyotes, just a ton of animals roaming around. And the way to avoid them showing up at your back door, well, this has to do with our screened in lanai's and fenced in yards. So. Also, keep in mind that if you are worried about alligators, you probably don't want to be, let's say, backing up to a fresh body of water as that's where the alligators are going to live. Um, if you don't want to have, you know, other animals just coming out of the trees, then you might not want to back up to a preserve area. So you really need to think of what's in your backyard to avoid any kind of wild animal just showing up at your backyard or at your door. All right, this next thing, number five on the list of things to avoid, avoid choosing the wrong area in Florida to live. So many people reach out to us and they're doing their research, like where should we live in Florida? And if you're looking here in the Sarasota Manatee County area, a lot of times you may be comparing us to Tampa St. Pete, or you may be considering the villages as a 55 plus option, or you may be thinking maybe Jacksonville or Miami. There's so many options. So the way to avoid not being happy with where you're moving to, do a lot of research. And I say this all the time, you need to come and visit. What you see online does not tell you everything, does not give you the complete story. Actually, my daughter herself and her husband are thinking of moving to Florida, and they told me originally that they were 100% sure that St. Pete was for them. Well, they have been visiting and researching and visiting different cities, and they decided just wasn't for them. St. Pete isn't where they're gonna be moving to, which is perfectly fine. You have to discover this. And I've had many clients that are looking here or St. Augustine or here in Naples. You really need to dive into these communities and figure out which neighborhood is best for you so you do not have to worry and you can avoid moving twice or being unhappy in Florida. All right, we're almost to the number one most important thing that you need to know. But before that, I want to go over one more thing. Avoiding heat, humidity, and hurricanes. Now, I know this seems almost impossible, right? It's, it's hot here in Florida, and we know that. And we know that there is a possibility of hurricanes. I was just recently talking to a colleague of mine, and he said their family just budgets little trips in for hurricane season. They know annually they may have to leave for two or three days as they really despise hurricanes and their children get fearful. So they've just made it part of their normal annual expense. Now we don't have hurricanes every year. I don't want everyone to think that we're gonna have hurricanes every year, but we are gonna have heat. And I know for myself to avoid some of the heat, I plan my summer vacations in August and September. And I go places outside of Florida where it's a little bit more bearable. I always say taking a summer vacation in June isn't necessarily the best option in Florida. The best time to leave Florida is September. So if you want to avoid some of our horrible weather, definitely plan some trips in August and September. All right, the last item, and this is absolutely the most important thing that I can tell anyone about moving to Florida. So obviously we do have storms, we do have things that happen, but to avoid contractors scamming you, please do not let someone come to your door, tell you that they can replace your roof or anything else that is damaged, and that if you just assign the insurance benefits over to them, they'll take care of it. This is what is costing Floridians so much in insurance. It's because fraud occurs. 
they take over, they, you assign them the benefits and the rights to file with your insurance company. And the next thing you know, they're not putting the roof on or they're charging the insurance company twice as much as it actually costs. And then the insurance companies has to sue them. This is big. Please talk to your insurance agent before scheduling work on your home. Make sure they know what is needed. Make sure the adjuster has seen your home. I know this is inconvenient and I know there's going to be people that show up and say, Hey, I can take care of that for you. But before you make any decisions with a contractor in Florida, research them, ask around, check them out with the Better Business Bureau. This is so important. And if we all do our part, we are going to help lower the insurance costs because we are going to get rid of all these fraud cases here in Florida. So these are my ways to avoid not enjoying Florida, but I'd love to hear from you as well. What are the things should we do as Floridians to really make Florida so much more enjoyable? And as always, if I can be of any help, I'm Lisa McBride with Sarasota Neighborhood Experts and my team and I love helping so many people buy, sell and relocate here to Florida. As always, I really appreciate you watching and until next time, take care.